Hey there, it's Gubba, and welcome back to the Gubba podcast. This podcast addresses topics like homesteading, prepping, food storage, and everything in between. And today I want to share with you what I'm doing right now to get prepared in hopes that you can think about your individual situation, assess your needs, and start preparing now too. So first, let's dive into the question of... What am I preparing for? The answer to this question will vary from person to person because everyone has individual needs and circumstances. So for example, someone may prepare heavily for hurricanes because hurricanes frequent their area. And for me, I won't do any hurricane prep because I will never see a hurricane where I leave. I say never, but who knows with how weird the weather and the world is. So maybe one day there will be a hurricane in the mountains. I don't know. Anyway, I would suggest you ask yourself what kind of emergency situations are prone to your area? Does the electricity go out often? Do you experience flooding? fires? Is job loss a concern to you? And once you hone in on what kind of situation is prevalent to you in your life, then you can begin making a game plan for you and your family. I will use myself as an example. I live on a farm near the mountains and I take into account that electricity may not always be reliable. So I prepare by having heat sources available to me so I can heat my house if the electricity goes out. I already use wood as my primary heat source, but I ensure that I have all of the tools to do so. I have a Mr. Buddy heater, an abundance of chopped wood, and blankets galore. I have so many blankets. And in my prep pile, I have flashlights, headlamps, batteries, candles, lighters, and matches. And I also think about how my food in my fridge and freezer will go bad if the electricity is out for a long time. So I make plans to transition my food out of the freezer to my pantry or rotate it into my recipes each week. I also have kitchen tools that don't require electricity to use. So if you stocked up on canned food, but only have an electric can opener, go get a manual can opener now. And do you see how you start thinking about an emergency situation such as electricity going out and address one need such as warmth and how the thought process continues to branch out. So don't be overwhelmed with prepping, but just start in one area address it, and then move on to the next. I wanted to dedicate this podcast to share how I am preparing right now. And so you can get an inside feel to my emergency preparedness, my thought process. And to start out, let me share and dive into my thought process for preparing so you can have an idea of how I operate. So you all know, or if you didn't, that I order from As Your Standard Monthly They're the largest independent food supplier in the U.S. They have great organic food and just amazing quality options for food that I have come to love. Well, I got an email from them a few weeks ago saying that they had a mysterious fire in their warehouse late at night. And immediately my mind is like, WTF? What? And a few years ago, my mind wouldn't jump to weird conclusions, but with the way the world has been progressing, weird conclusions seem to be the norm. And I question everything I read now. So I begin researching and I find out that there has been a plethora of mysterious fires at food distribution centers. And sure, sure, maybe just a coincidence, but honestly, when you actually start spending time putting things together. Things generally aren't coincidences. And it's just, I, anyways, so all of these events got me thinking about my food storage and what I need to work on because 
we have seen massive supply chain issues. Like, man, they are just continuing on. Oh man, it's crazy. And I don't want to be tornadoed up in a food supply issue, which with all of this weirdness, one could maybe assume some more food supply issues. And last week I got a text from my aunt asking how my chickens are and how lucky I am that I have chickens with the big chicken scare right now. I don't watch the news or read it, so I asked what she meant with the chicken scare, and she sent me an article about how they're slaughtering millions and millions of chickens due to an avian flu. Me being me, I question, is it really due to an avian flu, or does it go back to the mantra of you control the food, you control the people? And yes, this is true. It doesn't matter how much ammo you have stocked up on, you can't eat ammo. You control the food, you control the people. And sure, I probably sound extreme to some people, but I do not care. I will never rely on the government as my savior. I'm responsible for myself and I'm always questioning. I always question everything I read, right? And I, I focus on myself. I don't like to watch the news, read it, and I find I do my best when I'm just focusing on myself. So when I get sent stuff, I'm questioning like, what the heck? And I'm sure if Kim Jong-un over in North Korea was slaughtering chickens to control the food supply, he would definitely publish on the North Korean news networks that it's due to them having a flu. Definitely not for any other reason. And yes, I do have my tinfoil hat on right now, but my thought process after consuming and digesting these events is to look at my own food supply. Yes, I have a food storage, but I believe gardening is an extremely important and necessary skill to have. So then once my food storage runs out, if I ever came to that situation, I can continue to grow food for myself. You can garden anywhere. And I even did a podcast discussing how. So if you are interested, definitely check that episode out. And yes, you can stock up on seeds. But if you don't know how to cultivate them in your climate and area, they are essentially worthless. I guess you could sell or barter for them, but being able to garden and grow your own food is priceless. And this year I'm doing a small garden and I have started some seeds and will be planting others directly into my garden. So this is helping me get an idea of how to grow my own food. I would strongly and kindly encourage you to learn how to garden as well. It could be something as simple as a few herbs in the kitchen. It doesn't have to be a full operation. Just go get your feet wet. And it blows my mind that knowing how to grow your own food was common knowledge a hundred years ago. And that knowledge has been around for thousands of years and was lost in such a short amount of time. Well, it's time to take back what is ours, start becoming self-sufficient again. And as I discuss how I'm preparing right now, I hope you guys are able to see how I digest information and then apply it to my prep. Another example is recently I've read and heard a lot about the war in Ukraine affecting wheat and corn supply. Again, I'm unsure on the validity of that. Is that something to fear monger? I have no clue, but in case it is genuine, I have been stocking up on wheat berries. I love to make bread and I use a lot of flour, so it makes sense to me to have wheat berries in my long-term storage. I purchase wheat berries in bulk from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Bishop Storehouses, which you don't have to be a member to purchase from, by the way. And I also get wheat berries in bulk from Azure Standard. So when the news was dropping about the wheat supply in Ukraine, both of these sources became sold out of wheat berries. Now I'm able to get them. But have you ever thought of how much you use flour or how would you use flour if you couldn't get bread from the store? Flour is ground up wheat berries, so you will need a wheat grinder as well. And I purchased my wheat grinder from Country Living Grain Mill, which is a place that sells manual grain mills, which is a great thing to have on hand so then I can grind my wheat berries if I have no electricity. And there are electric grain mills, but I prefer to have tools that I can operate with or without power. So I read about a possible event 
I assessed my situation and I properly prepared for it. And another way I've been prepping is assessing my property and debating what animals to bring into the fold. And you know my goal is to be entirely self-sufficient, which would include having animals so I can butcher myself and have my own meat supply. And to get to that point, there is a bit of a learning curve. So I am consuming knowledge and I'm meeting with people who are well-versed in the animals I am considering to have joined my farm. And right now I have nine leghorn hens and one rooster. And this breed is a prolific egg layer, so I am counting on my chickens for my supply of eggs. And to be entirely self-sufficient though, I need to also have a supply of chicken feed that I grow for myself. So I need to figure out a system so I don't have to buy from the store. And this system is actually in the works with indoor hydroponics that I'm working on, but that would be for another podcast of how that works. But I have my eggs covered but I don't have my meat covered yet. So the best thing to do is just source that out. And did you know that some farms even have farm shares where you can purchase an animal, but they raise and butcher it. So you are supporting local farms, getting high quality meat, and you don't even have to have your own farm. So right now that's my process of getting meat. And I have experienced more benefits than just receiving high quality meat. I have met amazing people through sourcing my meat locally who have been a wealth of knowledge to me and are like-minded individuals. If you are interested in being self-sufficient, I would suggest getting to know the people at your Azure standard drop or doing farm shares. You can even do farm shares for vegetables, which is something I will be doing this year as well. Since my garden won't be entirely up and running, it's not going to be a big operation and I'm not going to set the bar high for myself. So then I'm disappointed and I'm stressed. I'm really just taking it slow there. But as you can see, when you start small, your branches begin to grow out and you start to dive into new areas. Don't be overwhelmed with prepping, but just take it piece by piece and watch your whole picture come together. I promise that you will feel so much better when you know you have a store of food ready to go in any situation in your own home in case you ever need it. Learn how to garden and you will feel the satisfaction when you watch your plants grow. I can't explain it, but it's so neat in the strawberries and it just tastes so much better when you're getting it from your own garden. And at the end of the day, We all have individual needs and I would suggest to look around you and see what you need to prepare for and do that now. Also, take a look at the world and factor that into your preparations. I'm not saying be consumed by it because that won't make you feel good, but just be diligent and do your best. I hope you have a better understanding of how I process things for my preparedness. And this is definitely not how you need to process things, but I hope it gives you a good idea of how to start and maybe some areas that need focusing in your household or homestead. I wish the best for everyone and I want everyone to be prepared for any situation the best that they can be. The feeling of security is unmatched, but I hope that you have the most wonderful day and thank you so much for listening to this episode and don't do anything a gubbo wouldn't do.